Hello, 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 hello. The bell is back. Mm -hmm. The bell is back. This is Father Adam greeting you with more good news that I know you can use. Hello, hello. Somebody gave me this wonderful cup for my coffee. My second cup of coffee. Hello, hello. Mm. Where did this idea of hello, hello come from? Well, it's to greet people. Greetings are so important. Mm. In Polish, we call it pozdrowienie, which means to give you health. In Spanish, it's salud, saludando, to give someone health. Because when you greet someone, especially with a smile, you save their life. And it's very important to make people laugh. Winston Churchill said, when you make people laugh, you take them on a vacation. It helps people forget all of their troubles, all of their problems, all of the situations that they are dealing with. Mm -hmm. That's why I like to make you smile and laugh and to greet you with more good news that I know you can use. I have been rereading the two books by Kitty Hart Moxon. She is a survivor of the infamous Nazi German concentration camp set up by them in Poland during the Second World War, Auschwitz-Birkenau, the concentration camp set up the death camp, hell on earth, that was set up there. She survived a year and a half in that hell on earth, her and her mother. And in her book, I Am Alive, and she's still alive. She's 96 years old, and she lives in England, and hopefully... One day I will get to meet her because she's a great inspiration to me. But in her book, she recounts that the experience of survival in this hell on earth, the only way to survive was to be joined to someone who could keep you alive. She says that you could keep someone alive by talking to them. Moral support. Begging them to live. You could keep a person alive in that hell on earth, Auschwitz, by talking to them. Encouraging them to fight. To push forward. To struggle. Do you know that the word Mary, the Blessed Mother Mary, her name Miriam in Hebrew means to struggle? So when we do as Mary did, we struggle. And Mary struggled in her life. And we are to struggle as well, to push forward. Encouraging a person with your words is giving them God because Jesus is the word of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. We call Jesus Verbo di Dio. No, that's Ital Italian, sorry. Verbum Dei, Latin. The word of God. So when you share good news, good words, you're sharing God. You're giving people God. Words have the power to edify, build up, save, or words have the power to kill. 
Mm -hmm. Lots of people say to me, you know, Father, I haven't killed anybody. Oh, no. With your tongue, you haven't killed a person. When you kill their energy, when you insult them, you kill people. Words have the power to kill or have the power to save. I am committed in my life to saving people with my words, to save people. And I encourage you to do the same. Kitty Hart teaches us that in Auschwitz, in this hell on earth, the way to survive was to be joined to somebody who could keep you alive, could keep you going with their words, their encouraging words. Hmm? Understanding, listening, compassion, and love. You could keep people alive, she says, just by talking to them. Just by listening and talking, you could save someone's life. After I was ordained a priest about two years into my priesthood, I met a young man in the hospital who tried to commit suicide. He was 25 years old. And I asked him, I said, why is it that you tried to kill yourself? You're 25 years old. You've got your whole life ahead of you. Why would you want to die? And he says to me, Father Adam, that day that I decided to kill myself, I told myself, I'm going to go walking on the street. And if I find someone, one person that will smile at me, one person that will smile at me, I will not take my life. Well, needless to say, he didn't find that one person. Hmm? Needless to say, he didn't. And he tried to take his own life. Smiles have the power to save. Hmm? That's why I smile all the time. Mm -hmm. Laughter saves. Enthusiasm. The word enthusiasm is a Greek derivative that means in God. En theos. In God. Mm -hmm. To have the enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. When Kitty Hart arrived at Auschwitz, her very first night there, she lay next to a woman, and the woman looked at her. She was a gypsy, a Roma person. And she looked at her, and she told her, You will make it out of this place alive. Kitty Hart was told by this Roma woman, you will make it out of this place alive. And she says, I kept that in here. I remembered it. And it kept me going throughout those two years in that hell. Hmm? And she made it out alive. You know, one thing that Kitty Hart says is, you couldn't survive Auschwitz-Birkenau on your own. You needed someone to help you survive. And then more importantly, for you to survive, you needed to help someone else survive. Because helping somebody else survive motivated you, she says. We all need a motivation. What is the best medicine for depression? If you're depressed, I always tell people, get a dog, get a cat. It will give you a reason in the morning to get up, hmm? to keep going, to take care of someone. Huh? Each of you are my motivation. I'm very motivated. Every single day I work very, very hard in order to prepare what I bring to you, the good news that I bring to all of you, because I love you. Mwah. I work very, very hard. From the time I get up, I read. I've got like stacks of books. And 
I listen to so much and I just, I prepare myself. I work very hard to bring you the good news that I know you can use in your life because helping you motivates me. Hmm? You are my motivators. Hmm. Hmm? See, we, we're helping to motivate each other to know that we do not walk alone in this life, that we always walk together, that you never walk alone, that you're always walking with somebody. Kitty Hart says her mother was her motivator because her mom survived Auschwitz too. That They moved together to England after the war. And then she later married a gentleman they divorced in 1992, and then she married a guy by the last name of Maxon. And uh, she continues to live in England to this very day. She's had a very interesting life. She's really helped me a lot. Her book, I Am Alive, excellent. Actually, there's like YouTube videos of her, all sorts of things. Her son is a doctor in Canada. She had two, two sons. One of them is a doctor in Canada, and he's also written books. Uh, very good books, by the way. Uh, very motivational. But she's inspired me. She's motivated me. And I am inspired to motivate each and every one of you. Hmm? Because I love you. Hmm? Like this. Some sort of bugs. Hmm? I'm inspired to motivate you. Hmm? And that keeps me going. <laughs> to motivate you. To keep going as well. To keep struggling. To not give up. You have to hear that you are loved. And I know that God loves you because I love you. Mm -hmm. Yes, God loves you. Just as you are. You know, when I was visiting prisoners at Pelican Bay Maximum Security State Prison, I celebrated Mass on the uh, baptism of the Lord. And I said during the Mass that what happened to Jesus when he entered the Jordan River and was baptized, that the heavens opened and God our Father declared over Jesus his beloved Son, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. I said the same thing happened at your baptism. When you were baptized, God, your Father, your Daddy, that loves you, declared over you, that he is pleased with you. And this one young man, 22 years old, comes up to me afterward. He's in prison for life because he killed a lot of people in East Los Angeles. And he says to me, I hate everything you said today. I hate everything you said today, he says. And I said, why? And he says, because what you said is a big lie. Nobody has ever been pleased with me. And least of all, my own parents. And I looked at him and I said, well, I'm pleased with you and I love you. And he began to cry when I said that. Never heard that. That someone is pleased with him. And I said, and I want you to fight because the number one cause of death at Pelican Bay Maximum Security State Prison is suicide. They all want to kill themselves. They go nuts. Hmm? And they, you know, kill themselves. That's how people die in prisons. A lot of them. They had, when I was at Pelican Bay, it's illegal today in California, but they had something called the SHU, Segregated Housing Unit, where they kept people in isolation total isolation. Most of them went nuts. Oh yeah. It's torture. Torture. Absolute torture. Uh-huh. Yeah. The United States has tortured people too. It isn't just the Nazis who did it. Hmm? I could go down history and show you. Hmm? People are cruel. Hmm? People are cruel. Kitty Hart doesn't have to go to hell. She's already been to hell. Huh? God doesn't send anybody to hell. People do. Hmm? Don't send anybody to hell in your life. 
And you can do that with your attitude, with the way you treat people, with indifference. Hmm? We have to send people to heaven. And heaven is a state of being. It's a mode of existence. It's not like we're going to be in heaven after we die. And right now we're where? No, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that you should be experiencing. Heaven is the presence of God. We have God in us. Hmm? And we should be experiencing heaven. And then after we die, it's just a continuation of something that you should be already experiencing in your life. Hmm? Heaven is a state of being. To live in heaven. Hmm? You couldn't survive on your own, says Kitty. You needed someone to help you. My mother kept me alive mentally by begging me to live another day. Her mom used to say to her, I beg you, please live, live, fight. Hmm? I'm begging you right now. Live, fight, don't give up. Hmm? That's why you, you watch me. Hmm? Nobody watches Father Adam Kotas because they have an easy life or they don't have problems. People who come and watch me or seek me, it's because they have very tough lives. Depressed, anxious, can't keep going, don't know how they're going to make it, and you need good news. And I am in your life to give you good news that I know you can use. Hmm? See, we have when, when the devil comes and messes with you and, and tells you, no, you won't make it, uh, you're this, you're that, you need to fill yourself with positive words from God. Yes, there will be earthquakes, says Jesus. There will be hurricanes. But not a hair on your head will be lost. Every one of your hairs is counted. So important are you, says Jesus. How does that make you feel? that you're going to be just fine. Mm -hmm. What do you think of my hair? Isn't it good? Mm -hmm. You know, I got over anemia. I had pernici pernicious anemia, which is like anemia that is almost impossible to get over. It's still in my system, but I'm fighting it. And I'm already out of it mostly. It's because I, I have an eating disorder, ED. Okay, and I'm, it's something that I'm going to be battling my whole life. Hmm? But I'm struggling and I'm fighting and I'm, I'm getting over it. One day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. One day at a time. Hmm? You know, they asked Mother Teresa, they said, Mother during an interview, what is the most important thing in your life? And she says, this interview. Hmm? This interview. Isn't that what Jesus said? Stop worrying about tomorrow. Tomorrow may not come. Live today. Today has enough problems of its own. Hmm? Enough worries of its own. Hmm? So we just keep going, we keep walking, and we never walk alone, ever. We're always walking accompanied in this life. Hmm? I hope each and every one of you knows that, that I'm accompanying you. I'm walking with you. You will be just fine. Do not give up. Keep the struggle. Hmm? I'm praying for you. And I always bless you. Always. The word blessing, do you want to know what the word blessing means? The word blessing is um, from the Latin benedicere, which means good speech. Um, if you know about languages, 
en Spanish, bien dicho, ben, bendición, benedicere in Latin. So when you say good things, you're blessing. When you want to curse somebody, it's mal dicere. It's a bad speech. So to curse somebody, you tell them you're stupid, you're no good. Mm -mm. You will amount to nothing. You're an imbecile. Uh -huh. And that will curse you. And then people internalize that. Mm -hmm. So to bless somebody, you do it with words, with gestures. Because our, our, our body speaks as well. You know, the way we carry ourselves. There's a lot of body speech. I guess, what do they call it? Body language? Mm -hmm. So you have to be mindful of that, that our, you know, that we speak positivity, love, tenderness, that we build people up. The young man that I told you about in the prison, 22 years old, Jaime was his name, is his name. He's right now um, at another prison. He got transferred, thank God. Uh, out of Pelican Bay. He's down south now, closer to his family, so they can visit him. I'm still in touch with him. I get like piles of letters from prisoners to this very day. Uh, and he told me that when he was growing up, his entire childhood was spent listening how no good he was. Why aren't you like your sister? Or why aren't you like your brother? Hmm? You should be like them. Hmm? Oh, we're just human beings. We are the way we are. Hmm? So do we build one another up or do we bring each other down? Hmm? The devil brings you down. God builds us up and showers us with mercy, with understanding, with love, with compassion. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for being here. I love you very much. And I always wanna keep sharing that good news. I'm uh, reading lots of books right now and uh, hopefully I'll be sharing more with you, more good news that I know you can use. Um, this particular one really is a very touching one. I've read it before. I Am Alive. And uh, going back to Auschwitz is another book that she wrote. Um, very good reads. Very inspiring. Also reveals the cruelty of human beings. How cruel people can be. Oh yeah. Remember. Auschwitz and the other concentration camps were set up by people. Mm -hmm. When I, I've been to Auschwitz nine times already. The last time I went to Gross Rosen because it's very close to, it's another concentration camp that's in Poland set up by the Nazis. I have to always say it's set up by the Nazis. Polish people had nothing to do with concentration camps. I always have to repeat that because there's so much misinformation around and it is very hurtful for somebody who's from Poland about the misinformation out there about concentration camps. Concentration camps were set up, many of them on Polish soil by the Germans, not by Poles. Okay, that's very important <laughs> for somebody who's from Poland. But Gross Rosen, uh, Big Rose uh, in German, uh, that's the concentration camp I visited this last time that I was in Poland. In fact, uh, there's people who watch me. I was shocked. I'm walking through the concentration camp. I was by myself because um, it helps me reflect and pray when, I'm, when I go to places like that. I like to go a lot of times by myself um, as much as I'm a huge people person and everybody knows that I like a lot of times to be by myself so that I could reflect internally 
and God speaks to me. Not just when I'm with people, but speaks to me in my prayer, when I'm by myself and in my silence. So I was walking through it and I'm totally silent. And these ladies, Father Adam, Father Adam, in Grossrosen, in Poland. And there wasn't a lot of people there. And there's a video on my YouTube, FR Adam Kotas videos, of these ladies coming upon me and they're like, <gasps> What are you doing here? And I said, well, the same thing you are. <laughs> so that was inspiring that these ladies were from Galicia, from Spain. And uh, they watch my videos. And they did say there, you know, that I motivate them. I said, well, that's great. You're motivating me right now. We're motivating each other. <laughs> But in the concentration camps, like in Auschwitz, it says, this is what one human being prepared for another human being. This is what one human being prepared for another human being. Because people prepare hell for each other. Don't do that. Hmm? Don't do that. You have to prepare heaven for one another. Okay, hello, hello. Mm.